What's Bobby got to do? What? Hey, it's me again, Japanese Tutor. And today we're going to do the uh, chess secrets. Uh, we're going to go over the Dutch. The Stonewall Dutch. Uh, I think this is episode number 16. And we have a really, really interesting game. Actually, I had to go into a few databases because they didn't have this game online. Um, it was, which was kind of interesting. I had to search it by the tournament. And there I did find it. Um, so this is by CMEOM. Uh, Plotnik versus Sergei Domadov, and uh, this is in Belgrade of uh, 1988. And I'm pretty sure people are going to be like, that's not how you pronounce that. Okay, tell me how to pronounce that uh, wherever you can. If you're on YouTube, down below, if you're on Twitch, you can shout me out right here. Um, so, d4, e6, and, and we all know this stuff. Um, f5 pushing here, going to the Dutch. And we're, what we're playing is a stone wall. So let's go ahead and flip this board over. Even though we should see it from both sides, let's just make it easier on our eyes because we're going to be looking at some of the plans for black in this uh, case. G3, take bishop G2, C6. All normal stuff. And C5. So this is like another like weird move. Like what is what is C5? And I'm just going to read what the author has to say, and then I'll go into what I have to say. So this kind of uh, tempo gain is mainly seen in the sub 2000 section. Um, or sections. It's surprising to see a player of uh, Palatnik's caliber, um, GM, playing such a move. And you can't help. Waiting for white to demonstrate his idea. Indeed, when it doesn't appear on the board, you wonder where white was tricked out of his preparation. And there's a question here in the text that says, Would white's C5 idea have been justified in a similar position where black would have had to retreat his bishop to E7 rather than to C7? And he... The text answer is saying that is too general a question to answer, and it simply implies that Black has played something other than c6 and e7 or queen e7. Um, so let me give you my thoughts on this. Yes, this move does gain space. Yes, this move um, does kind of clamp down this. Um, yes, it does solidify the pawn structure. Yes, you are able to play here and here a little bit more aggressively, but what you do do is you um make this a weakness you make this a weakness now after i play c7 b6 is a very nice threat saying takes takes and now what what do you really have on the queen side and now i'm going for a king side attack and my bishop's pointing there anyways my bishop can be on b8 you know it doesn't matter where it is on this diagonal as long as we cover this important f4 square um and you don't have to push immediately like if you wanted to push they're not going to take you, right? One of the main ideas of the wall um, is that we just leave it as is and then we'll push f4 eventually. Sometimes, in some cases, e5, um, but you should not be too hasty with your c5 idea. I think that some better moves um, can just be developing first. And if you finally want to solidify that pawn structure, then bam, you hit, hit him with c5 because a quick a4, b4, or b4, a4 come. Those are just my uh, two cents. Thank you. Thank you, baby. Okay. And what's up, chess coach? All right. So the game continued. So c5, um, bishop c7, and then bishop f4. So, yeah, here bishop f4 it kind of seems slow, right? Like, okay, they have cramp. This is like a great square for a knight, but how does a knight get there, right? Like, all of the entry points are blocked off, right? So, there are no real entry points here. Um, and they're offering to trade bishops in a cramped position or although this bishop okay so white does want to trade the dark squared bishops usually in these uh dutch stonewall kind of positions um 
But here, why would you play c5, putting the bishop back, and then putting bishop here? So what's your plan with c5? And that's, I guess, what I, I kind of really want to address. Because I, I don't get it. Your, is your plan to cramp down here? Then, But my plan is maybe to play here. Or I, I can even stop your queenside plans like with maybe an a5 idea at some point. Or maybe I can play b6 myself. Right? Or I can just take take and follow the same plans that we've been following all along um with takes takes king uh castles king g8 rook g8 bam and attack on this line and that doesn't seem half bad either so b6 is uh what he played here um i don't agree with that right so I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, the author of the text doesn't agree with that either. I feel like bishop captures is just a stronger move because we've already seen um, very similar positions in our previous games and our previous chapters. Now, if you have missed the previous chapters, we have a whole series on the YouTube. Um, so go check it out. It's under Dutch uh, Stonewall playlist. And uh, just get, get booked up. Um, but yeah, so they play b6 here. Okay, so on B6, he says, it's hard to understand why white, why, sorry, it's hard to understand why black gives white the extra option to exchange on C7 like this. Bishop catches a 4, G catches a 4, B6, Queen C2 would have left would have led to exactly the same position in a more forcing way. So basically they're saying, if, you want to play b6 anyways why allow them the option of doing this if they're going to play maybe let's say queen c2 anyways why allow them this option of taking here where if you want to get into that line you can just play the more forcing take take b6 then and then queen c2 but to each their own okay so queen c so they play queen c2 here and the author puts this as a slightly uh, dubious white should or inaccurate um white should accept the offer and play bishop c7 so this is what he should have played bishop c7 queen c7 queen c2 um and this is a very simple way to uh equality and white's a little bit better here and it was just a very simple way to get into that and this has been played many times before um it's unclear play but it's probably better than what he shows in queen c2 um so sorry b6 queen c2 take takes what he's saying is that we could have got we could have reached this position if instead of b6 we can just take take b6 and if queen c2 here it's exact same position but it's more forcing we don't have to guess. Right. So we, we know. Knight, knight e4. After that, we, we're going to put our knight here. And we're going to do... Um, we're going to try to trade off. Castles. We know this. But let's see how the game progresses. Let's see if there's a new idea now that they have played c5 already. Um, because now our knight actually does a great job of attacking. And maybe this knight, when it develops, can also attack this weak pawn so black delays castle in view of the approaching end game so if so uh b captures Ooh, okay so let, let's go instead of here so b capture c5 queen capture c5 queen capture c5 d capture c5 and now knight e4 rook c1 this is just one of the lines uh this is uh, a little bit better for white and if takes 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 six here then knight e5 bishop d7 rook c1 king e7 And this is another game that happened, and it was slightly better for white. So I guess the improvement 
on this position um, that he found was actually to play here, knight e4. And then after knight e4, knight e5, you know, this is slightly weak. B capture c5 and f3, saying, hey, get out of my, get out of my face. Knight f6. And after, after knight f6, we have queen takes. Oh, you want, you want me to talk about bishop a6? Yeah, sure. So uh, let's go into the line that we were just playing. Uh, so let's say b capture c5, 6, 6, 6, takes. On, so instead of here, uh, bishop a6, attacking the pawn here. Just knight d4, attacking this. This is weak. This is a great outpost for this knight. Um, and we're going to follow with... It really depends. I mean, we can try to protect it with king e7. But then just rook c1, and we'll develop our pieces, and they're storming on the queen side. And that's a, a really, really common idea in these kind of structures to go ahead and just storm down the queen side. Okay, so let's go back here, knight e5. He captures uh, f3, and queen captures, queen captures. So, sorry, knight here, and we're trying to trade off here, give him, this This knight's a very strong knight, and I would love to take it because I, I can play here and attack two loose pawns as well. Uh, so he definitely doesn't want that, he backs off, and then bishop a6 after this. So after these trades, actually, black is slightly better now, um, and whenever white advances his pawn to c5, this becomes an interesting way to activate um, the light square bishop. So an idea, a, a takeaway from this game is whenever white plays c5, now your bishop can go on that a6, f1 diagonal and try to fight because this bishop here is biting on brick. And it's not even brick. It's more like diamond because you can't, you can't take it. You can't capture it because it's your own piece. Right? So here we're actually in the game. Now, what looks funny is this knight right here and this rook. So we have to pay attention to that. So rook c1. Knight to f8. King f2. The king returns to the center. Arguably, white is better developed at this point. But black's development is uh, qualitatively uh, superior. So basically, yes white is just developed a little bit better in terms of having pieces out but black is going to start maneuvering and it's going to be better so his development is slightly better if that makes sense so bishop catches d3 e captures d3 black has a considerable advantage white's pawn structure is damaged and his bishop is ineffective so knight to g6 attacking here and also, maybe in some cases, threatening here. King e3, d4. Now, it may seem strange to exchange the center, uh, the central part of the stone wall for white's isolated doubled f-pawn, but it's a question of peace activity. Hmm. So I want to stop there. I didn't want to look at the rest right now. And I just want to kind of like really gauge this move for what it is. Um, so we're trading off, okay, the center pawn, but let's say after this, this, what is this bishop doing? Fighting on brick, can't go here. So we're dominating this bishop right now. Bishop can't move. Right, knight d7. Holding this, and if he plays king e3, e5. Wow. What if they play like d4? Maybe we can play g5 and just just steamroll and then say, hey, your bishop is not going to be active. This seems great for black. Another idea. It's okay. So if he doesn't take, well, I mean, he has to take or he's losing this pawn anyways, right? So takes, takes. Let's say they just try to get their pieces out as soon as possible. Well, they have to protect this. So let's say rook c2. 
maybe I'll still play knight g7 because I want to play e5, g5, and I don't know which way. Maybe I'll castle, maybe I won't. I, I'm thinking about castling queenside, actually. That seems super interesting. Um, okay, so let's see what happened in the game. Okay, so this is the exact continuation that we were analyzing. So Black's Knight on F4 is simply enormous. Its power is enhanced by the availability and of the equally attractive d5 square. Knight d2, king e7, which is slightly dubious. Uh, knight d5, he said in the text, knight d5, king f2. Um, king f7 avoids complications and may be a better way to coordinate black's pieces. But okay, let's uh, go into what happened in the text. King e7. d4. This pawn sacrifice activates most of white's pieces and confuses the issue considerably. So, check. King f2. E captures d4. Now, note that if they play here, we're just going to play, you know, this rook maybe here or maybe even play king f6 but we do not uh maybe taking is not the best idea uh you want to keep the tension i mean it's okay it's, but this maybe this bishop is going to come here and ruin the day okay but let's see what happened in the text and rook c4 this active move is probably white's best chance so 93 rookie one inning King d8, rook a4, and king c7. And after rook c1, I guess the, what what is your idea, so? And I guess the question that I have is, why can't you just take this? Ah, I, I'm bad. It's early in the morning for me, so I'm sorry. So, sorry about that. So, Black's healthier pawn structure should ensure him some advantage in this one. So, Knight captures f1, and we're talking about peace activity. Like, what, what can his pieces do? And this rook is kind of like useless here. So let's keep going. D3. We're going to give you that pawn, and but you're going to have to work for it. So after D3. Again, it's natural to activate a rook with uh, rook H to D8. So let's see what he plays. Check. Okay, and then we're going to get it. This is a very, very good night. Okay, and then that works to c4, h6. And then he plays knight f3, which is considered to be a mistake. Because he should have just played rook capture z3 instead. But then, like, then rook h to e8, finally developing a piece, takes. And then we're going to try to trade off. Obviously, we want to trade off because we want these two. Right, rook takes. Takes, and now it's a double attack. So here, and this this is uh, pretty much GG. Presumably, White is lost on time at his position, uh, but this may objectively uh, be lost. But it's hardly resignable. But yeah, good pawn structure. The way I would probably try to end it. Let's give uh, White a move. Hmm, what can white play? Let's say here. I don't know because that just seems bad because I have F captures. Maybe here. Hmm. 
No. I want to play Rook here, like, and threaten this line. So if here, here, and I can push this. But as you can see, we have a lot of different ideas. And the main idea here is that if they push an early C5, not only can we attack it with B6, and if they play Bishop before we take, but also we can play Bishop A6. Um, so that's it for the Stonewall lesson. Uh, thank you guys for being here, and I'll see you next time.